In video game world, it was just video games, right? You weren't supposed to talk about politics, you weren't supposed to talk about your sexuality or personal identity. Growing up making games and growing up getting closeted, I was like, how do I get these two parts of my life to like meet? And on the other hand, going through all this like rough shit and thinking about like, who am I? And what do I do? And how does society think of me and stuff? And I feel like in any other art form, people would like write a book about it or like make a movie about it. So then I was like, okay, should I just make a game about it to try to sort through my stuff? The main provocation of putting gay and queer characters in my games is that I'm centering them. I'm centering the story. I'm also keeping the focus on sex and intimacy as well in my games. You know, you play a typical RPG where you have to fight dragons or like collect treasure or something. And then that's like 50 hours long. And then for five minutes, maybe you get to have a little bit of sex or something in the game or something, or maybe you get to kiss someone. So I was, I, I thought, what if I just cut out all that dragon and dungeon bullshit and just zoom in on those five minutes of sex, five minutes of queerness, that are allotted to every game that does representation. What if I just let that breathe, let that expand and take up more of the space? I'm one of the most banned game developers in the world, probably, uh, especially by Twitch.tv, bless their hearts. They specifically ban a lot of my games by name. Um, like, they specifically ban Rinse and Repeat, they specifically ban Cobra Club, they specifically ban Radiator 2, right? It's not just some kind of, like, blanket policy thing. Like, some Twitch person actually looked up the names of my games and stuff and put them on this long list of specifically banned games. But the thing that really makes me upset about it, though, is that the other games on there are games about like sexual assault or there are games about just being really like gross, being really offensive. And it feels like my games work so hard to establish consent and respect that putting my games on the same level as like a game about assault or something seems really unfair to me and seems actually really gross and homophobic in another way too. The Tea Room came from some historical research I started doing. I heard about this other piece called uh, Tea Room, which was a found documentary made of police footage of a bunch of cops staked out like a bathroom and put secret hidden cameras to film men having sex with other men in this bathroom because the truth is that they didn't have any evidence because it was like a victimless crime. There wasn't any harm being done. The cops were had a problem. They couldn't prosecute people because they didn't have any evidence. So instead, they set up that secret hidden camera. They installed all this footage. They recorded for three months in this secret little closet and basically made one of the first full color gay pornos ever made. As a young gay person of color, I'm really interested in moments where police have used their powers to prosecute people for their sexuality. And it, it's a really singular flashpoint and informs a lot of the current debates we're having in the gay community. If we can't rely on big commercial mainstream interests, to represent our identities, or it also just feels pathetic to be begging a corporation to represent me. Please represent me, please, I'll be good. It's just so full of it, it sucks. I feel like Wonderville is actually part of this growing community in independent games where the idea that video games can be more of a grassroots phenomenon where we take video games into our own hands, 
We make the games that represent us. We make the games that we care about. We make the games about the topics and ideas that we care about. Uh, the video games can represent our politics instead of a corporation trying to weirdly tiptoe around politics. So to me, that's, that's why these projects are so important because it represents a bunch of creators and communities coming together to help sustain ourselves and tell our own stories.